for the 21st century, the B-21. Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today, we've got some exciting updates on the B-21 Raider, the stealth bomber from the United States. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more defense-related content. Now, let's jump into the details. Last November, the B-21 Raider had its maiden flight, and just this January, it's set to kick off full-scale production. The U.S. Deputy Secretary of Defense, LaPlante, stated in a release that he has given the green light for low-rate production of the B-21. As of now, the U.S. Department of Defense hasn't disclosed the specific contract value, the total number of B-21s to be produced, or the timeline for completing the contract. On November 10th, the first B-21, codenamed Cerberus, took off from the U.S. Air Force Plant 42 in California. After takeoff, it headed straight to the nearby Edwards Air Force Base for landing. This initial test flight was followed by an official test flight on January 17th. Under the B-2 production contract, Northrop Grumman is set to produce six pre-production B-21s. The first has already undergone a successful test flight, while the remaining five are in various stages of construction. According to a new contract from the U.S. Department of Defense, it seems that testing has gone quite smoothly and the new B-21s are already in production. Deputy Secretary of Defense LaPlante mentioned a key attribute of the B-21 plan, emphasizing its design for production from the outset, aiming for large-scale deterrence. He highlighted that the real importance lies in substantial production and deployment on the front lines. From the statements made by the Department of Defense, it's evident that even the first B-21, in terms of technology, is quite mature. The B-2 bomber was revolutionary, being the first flying wing operational combat aircraft in the U.S. The B-21 swift progress is attributed to the incorporation of mature technologies. Structurally, it's a continuation of the B-2 stealth bomber. Over the 30 years of B-2 use, Northrop Grumman has accumulated experience and test data, contributing to significant advancements in the aerodynamic layout of the B-21. In terms of electronics and situational awareness, the B-21 draws inspiration from Lockheed Martin's F-35. The stealth layer of the B-21 likely sources its technology from the F-22 and F-35. Now, let's talk about the engines. The B-21 uses twin engines derived from Pratt & Whitney's F-135 engine. Although the specific engine model hasn't been disclosed, it's an improved version of the F-135, boasting a thrust exceeding 18 tons. Given the B-21's larger size, this promises increased thrust. Due to improvements built upon existing engines, the technology is more mature, resulting in a shorter production and debugging cycle, explaining the rapid progress of the B-21 project. Because the B-21's weapon subsystems utilize mature systems, the first B-21 isn't a traditional prototype. Unlike previous experiences where prototypes were specifically manufactured for testing, often featuring design simplifications, the first B-21 adheres to production standards. After testing, it could even be directly deployed for military use, saving significant time and money. In a recent statement, Northrop Grumman announced that their test aircraft is ready for production, meeting all flight performance and data requirements. As the world's first sixth-generation aircraft, the B-21 is set to become the cornerstone of the future U.S. Air Force. Now, let's talk about the contract awarded to Northrop Grumman by the Department of Defense in January. The key term here is low-rate initial production. What does that mean? In simple terms, it's a common phase in weapon production. During this phase, both production capabilities and weapon systems may not be fully ready. There's a possibility of simultaneous production, testing, and improvements. Weapon systems and production lines might undergo changes. After this initial production period, when the entire aircraft's weapon systems are finalized and the production line is matured, multiple production lines can be expanded, achieving full production rates. For example, during the initial production rate stage, the F-35 could produce around a dozen aircraft per year, but now, at full production rates, it can produce approximately 160 aircraft annually. Considering this, for the first B-21 contract, I estimate the quantity to be less than 10 aircraft. While the initiation of mass production is a positive development for the U.S. Air Force, it poses challenges for Northrop Grumman. The company recently revealed an anticipated loss of nearly $1.2 billion due to the B-21 stealth bomber's production plan. 
Despite the financial hit expected for the first five batches, the company believes that, with the continued production and increased output of the B-21 throughout the entire production cycle, the overall revenue will be substantial. When compared to these future earnings, the earlier losses will seem insignificant. On January 25th, Northrop Grumman released a press release before their quarterly earnings call, stating that the B-21 project incurred approximately $1.56 billion in pre-tax expenses, resulting in a net loss of $1.17 billion after deducting various offsetting expenses. The primary reasons for these losses are higher than expected inflation and other factors in the production chain. In another earnings call in October 2023, Northrop Grumman CEO mentioned that the B-21 project might achieve zero profits. Back in December 2022, when the B-21 was unveiled, the U.S. military estimated the total program cost for the 2019 fiscal year to be $203 billion, with $25.1 billion allocated for development, $640 billion for production, and $114 billion for maintenance and operation over 30 years. By 2023, after accounting for inflation, the total value had risen to $243.6 billion. The U.S. Air Force plans to procure at least 100 B-21 bombers. Compared to the B-2, the B-21 is smaller but boasts enhanced stealth and situational awareness capabilities. It can carry a significant payload, including anti-ship weapons and potentially nuclear bombs. In the future, it could serve as a command hub for unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, coordinating missions with stealthy UAVs for ground and sea strikes, interception, and air defense tasks. Therefore, the B-21 is not merely a concept of a stealth bomber, it could evolve into an aerial command center akin to the NGAD. The B-21's first flight receiving a mass production contract within just two months is unprecedented in the history of Air Force development. It's evident that the B-21's design and production strategy have been highly successful. At this pace, it's highly likely that the B-21 will be operational within the next two years. So, if we see the B-21 in active service by the end of 2026, it shouldn't come as a surprise. Once deployed, the B-21 will have a profound impact on the Asia-Pacific region. Unlike the B-2, which faced maintenance challenges and could only be deployed occasionally to places like Guam and Diego Garcia in the Indian Ocean, the B-21's simpler maintenance allows for more flexible deployment. In addition to Guam, it could be stationed at various airports in Japan, ready to respond swiftly to any developments in the Taiwan Strait. The B-21, equipped with long-range strike capabilities, could deliver devastating blows to both maritime and land targets. In conclusion, the B-21 Raider is progressing at an unprecedented pace, showcasing a successful design and production strategy. Its deployment will undoubtedly have a significant impact on global geopolitics, particularly in the Asia-Pacific region. Stay tuned for more updates, and if you found this information valuable, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.